thank you so very much for joining in. Uh, just to set the context about why why I felt necessary, uh, why I felt it's necessary to do such a session. What's happening around us, I think, is uh, not a secret to any one of us. It's widely visible. I think uh, the amount of uh, heartbreaking news that each are probably getting on a daily basis. I don't think we've ever experienced something like this in our lifetime. Um, and uh, it has, uh, while we have lost precious lives, uh, the aftermath of it all is also something which is begun beginning to become extremely daunting. Uh, to share with you all, personally, I've been getting so many calls and I have uh, so many people reaching out, say, seeking some kind of guidance and help uh, in terms of what should families do um, after they have sometimes recovered, which is fortunate for them, those people who've recovered from this horrible, horrible uh, disease, uh, I think it's good, but then it has come with a hefty price for many of the people. Uh, the cost of hospitalization, um, the amount of money they had to shell out to get themselves a bed with oxygen or a bed with, uh, in an ICU, uh, the kind of uh, expenses they're incurring for uh, the injections, the tablets, I think the list is very long. And what drove me to this conclusion that we need to spend some time on this topic uh, and the final nail in the coffin and uh, extremely sad to put it that way has been when um, somebody reached out telling me about this uh, 21 year old girl who uh, along with, his fa with her family members were down with COVID. Uh, so four of them, um, uh, her brother, uh, father and mother and, and along with her, all four of them had to be hospitalized. Uh, and the tragic part was, and the tragic part is that uh, she lost all her other family members uh, and which in itself is extremely tragic and horrible. But at the moment she's left with hospital charges for four people. And all the savings that the entire family has is not enough uh, to kind of uh, take care of that, right? So today's uh, session is not an attempt to probably be able to compensate or substitute for the kind of financial pain many families are going through, but it's just an attempt on our part to throw some light in terms of some of the options which can probably partially take care. And I'm just hoping it does partially take care of some of the challenges that are being faced by many families. And some of the panic and anxiety which follows is also an account of lack of awareness, of not knowing uh, what to do, what are their options. So this is a small attempt on our part to kind of put together uh, some of the options. Uh, what we have attempted to do is, we've attempted to understand the struggles of those who are in the unorganized sector, uh, separate from those who are in the organized sector. And why so? Because if you are somebody who's employed formally and is part of formal employment, I think your options obviously are far more than those who are in the informal sector. Uh, I think uh, it also reminds us as a country that why is it so much important for the country to formalize its workforce, but that's an agenda for another day. So what we will do is that we'll not take too much of your time. We will present some information which we have, which we find handy. And then we would invite you all to raise your questions. I have a couple of my internal experts also available. For whatever questions I can handle, I'll handle. And the rest, I will request them also to pitch in. Uh, before we proceed, we would like to do a small poll to understand where we stand. So I would request uh, my team to kind of uh, launch the first poll before we begin the presentation. Over to you guys for the poll.
do let me know when you guys are done with the poll by the way it won't take too many too much time it's few minutes and few seconds and the poll will be done so So the first poll question today was, are you as an individual financially prepared for the second and third wave of COVID-19? 22%, uh, which is by the way, the least have uh, said that they are. And the rest is uh, uh, a lot of you, 43% believes that they are not. And 35% believes that maybe they are. So anyway, I think uh, it's uh, it's never too late. Uh, I think uh, some of, we'll spend some time talking about some of your current entitlements if you are employed. Uh, we will also try and help, um, help try and help um, uh, your ability to make choices for the future. And so hopefully you find the session useful, please do free to put in your Q&As at any point of time using the Q&A tab. Uh, can I have the presentation up, please? And you can dive right into the next slide. So I think what we will first touch upon, I think first, let me spend some time talking about those uh, who are employed in the organized sector. What are your options? Uh, and then I shall move on to the informal sector or those who are in the unorganized sector. So uh, next slide, please. So I think uh, we'll try and put together what are your entitlements from a statute uh, perspective. So, uh, and especially those of you who are covered under the ESIC scheme. And I, I'd like to remind each and every one of you that as, as of now, uh, under the ESIC scheme um, is a salary criteria based on which you are part of the ESIC scheme. So it's not a scheme which is available to everyone. It is essentially for people with a th certain threshold or gross wages and below. Um, but I think this is that's where the, the that's the lot which is most vulnerable today, and and hence it's very important to share this uh, with all of you. So I think uh, um, from the medical benefits perspective, uh, I don't know whether you guys are aware, but the insured or his family members, and if, uh, if these family members are covered under the ESIC scheme and they've been essentially tagged under their uh, ESIC membership, if in, infected with COVID-19, can avail free medical care in any of the ESIC COVID-19 dedicated hospitals. Presently, there are 21 ESIC-run hospitals with 1,676 COVID isolation beds to 29 ICU beds and about 163 ventilator beds. Yes, you might argue with me, are they enough or sufficient? Uh, well, I think that's again a subject of another day. But at this point of time, it's important to make you realize that this is an option which is available. There are 26 ESIC scheme hospitals run by the state government, having 2,023 beds, which are functioning as COVID-19 dedicated hospitals. And each of the 154 ESIC hospitals are instructed to function with a minimum of 20% of its bed capacity as COVID beds for ESIC insured people, beneficiaries, staff and pensioners. It's something which we have to remind. I know that amidst all our panic, amidst, amidst so when there is a crisis, um, we tend to forget about this. But if you are somebody covered under ESIC or if your family is covered also under an ESIC scheme, don't miss out on this optionality that is there. Of course, of course, you should be looking out if these are not available or these are already running in full capacity, but this is an option which is already available to you. Can we move to the next slide, please? So the medical benefits which are covered under the ESIC scheme actually for a couple of locations include plasma therapy. For example, 
uh, SIC Medical College and Hospitals in Haryana and Telangana. So I think these are the two places. I know, again, it's insufficient, but even if this helps people who are in and around this area, um, I, I, I thought it might just be useful. And hence, we are, hence, I thought I'll mention it. ESIC beneficiaries can seek medical treatment from tie up hospitals directly without a referral red letter as his or her entitlement. And also the insured of, uh, and or family members can claim reimbursement if COVID-19 treatment is taken in any private institution. And in our experience, the claim should get processed within 60 days. So please bear, it, bear this in mind. And again, do not panic because this is an option that is available. Uh, again, through our experience, while please, uh, uh, do not hold me against what I'm about to say, but in our experience, almost 80% of the expenses can get covered through this route and channel. So please do bear that in mind. Next slide, please. So some of the cash benefits which are covered under the SIC scheme. So in short person, if infected with COVID and unable to work can claim sickness benefit for the said period at 70% of average daily wages for 91 days as per entitlement. I mean, I have heard many people feeling extremely worried uh, about what would happen uh, if they are not able to show up for work, if they exhaust their leaves quota, I think. Um, and many employers, by the way, especially those in the SME segments who are themselves pushed to the corner, wonder what to do in such situations. So I just wanted to remind you that this is an entitlement that you have. In the event of demise of an insured person, funeral expenses, um, I hope you don't have to use this, but funeral expenses of up to 15,000 are paid to the eldest surviving member of his or her family. Um, it's, very, it, it's a very difficult situation. And for me also, it's been extremely, um, challenging to even come and present some of this stuff with you, but we need to be practical and rational given what's happening and hence uh, it's important to bear in mind some of these details. Yeah, next slide please. So a lot of people wanted to also know that under Employee Compensation Act 1923, are there any benefits? I'd like to remind you that COVID-19 is not considered as an occupational disease if an employee is infected with COVID-19, as it is not possible to determine if workplace was a source of infection. And secondly, no compensation and medical expenses are payable under the Employee Compensation Act by the employer as of now. Um, so that's a current scenario for, for, so there is no help at this point from EC uh, that's available to you all. Uh, of course, as, as we will probably take it to the ministry and see if there is any kind of short-term change or amendment that can happen, but I do not want to give you any false hope at this point. Next slide, please. So some of, I also wanted to talk about, it's just not ESIC. I think you can look at the Employee Provident Fund as well for some help. So some of the cash benefits that we can talk about, number one, of course, is withdrawal of non-refundable advance by any EPF members is allowed. This sh uh, shall not exceed the basic wages and DA for three months or up to 75% of the amount standing to a member's credit in the EPF account, whichever is lower. So this could also be potentially one source which can help you uh, kind of take care of any kind of medical expenses that you can run into which are hefty in nature. And in case of the unfortunate situation, really unfortunate situation of a death, the nominees are entitled to withdrawal of the employee's provident fund account. Uh, they are entitled to family pension. And one interesting thing uh, and an enhancement that has happened in recent time, under ED EDLI, a benefit up to a maximum of seven lakh rupees. It used to be six lakhs before, it was enhanced to seven lakhs will be extended to the nominees uh, and the families of the deceased. So I think this is again an important source and it's something that can ease the burden to some extent. Over and above that, I think um, I'm somebody who's, uh, if, you, if you're planning for the future, because uh, 
as uh, the writing on the wall is, this second wave is not going to be the end of the journey. There's probably going to be another third wave. Uh, so we are not out of the woods when it comes to COVID yet. So it's very important to make proactive investments and proactive choices in terms of, of, of procuring health insurance coverages uh, so that you can take care of yourself and your family uh, and you do not get into the kind of rut that many people are currently going through. So I would recommend that please look at uh, the different insurance, the options that are being offered by different insurance towards Corona-19 coverage or Corona-19 drug shots policies. This is especially for individuals and they do cover hospitalization and home treatment expenses. Uh, side by side, I think if uh, many of you, if you're already employed with a company, there could be an add-on benefit of proof MediClaim. Uh, and that is something that you could also look at as a possible source through which you could mitigate some of the challenges. Again. I don't think, um, my assumption is it may not take care of all of your expenses, uh, but it can definitely mitigate and you may not be left with a hefty bill, uh, which you do not know uh, how to fund for or how to, how to manage. So I would heavily, uh, and I would uh, personally recommend uh, very much uh, either uh, that you take the Corona-19 coverage, the Corona-19 drug policies, and go, go and have it with your HR team, go and have a conversation to, from, with your employers to figure out if you are being covered under any kind of GMCs. Um, I, I can tell you that um, uh, corporate India right now, uh, from if, if there's a change that has happened in corporate India from last year, same time and this time, is that I see a lot more empathy. I see uh, they have realized the, the importance, I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure corporate India always knew and the corporates always knew the importance of human capital, but they have also understood the gravity of the situation much better and they are willing to actually make upfront uh, investments in terms of uh, providing employees with GMCs or enhancing it uh, and so on and so forth. So please don't rule that out. Please do find out these details in advance uh, rather than, so, and if you have the cashless opportunity, you do have cashless options if that is available. And if you can, in case of an exigency, if you can get yourself admitted to one of those hospitals, I think it again is extremely useful. So do reach out to your employers and find out the list of those cashless hospitals in and around where you are or where your families are, because that's extremely useful. At the last minute, we know how this thing attacks us at the last minute. We should not be running around helter skelter figuring out what those are. So please be prepared as much as possible. Uh, next slide, please. Now I'm gonna spend a little bit of time. Uh, the unfortunate reality is that there is really little or no protection for those in the unorganized sector, for most of those who are in the unorganized sector. But still, I mean, still those who are working in job roles, which are, um, typically casual in nature, I think there is one particular uh, solution at the of time, so which you should remind yourself. And I'm sure there are people who are working with you in your environment who are informally engaged in some form or the others. Please pass on the message to them. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm very confident that they will find this extremely useful. Can you move to the next slide? So we have a, a PMJAY, it is Pradhan Mantri Jan Aridya Yojana Scheme. So all you need is your Aadhaar details to enroll into this program. There is no upfront uh, investment or there is nothing you need to pay to get yourself enrolled into it. Uh, the eligibility is based on socioeconomic and caste census data. Essentially, this is for the informal sector. The beneficiaries can avail the services across India and covers all families listed under SCCC 2011. So there is a benefit uh, of health cover up to five lakh per family. Priority is being given to girl, child, women, and senior citizen. Uh, all pre-registered diseases are covered. And uh, last I checked, this is something which will help you even uh, for um, 
protecting you again i mean helps you cover your some of your covid related hospitalization expenses cashless and paperless registration and administration if for any of this you need more information please do reach out to us and we are more than happy to kind of help you if you need any guidelines on any of this so at this point of time for the informal sector this is the best option and i would urge again that if you see in your environment um, and i think the apathy of everyone who's getting affected affects us so if you see anyone in the informal sector who are one of the uh, below mentioned can you move to the next so at this point of time there are 11 occupational categories of workers who are eligible for the scheme so if you find anyone in your environment who you think might find this useful please go and recommend this to them and ask them to enroll and register into the pmjay portal it's it's an online portal so you can do the necessary registrations and uploads from this so these are the 11 categories of people these are self employed people typically who can avail uh, the benefits of pmjay at this point so um, that brings me i i don't have much more to share but if you have any more questions if there is anything else that you would like to ask uh, please um um please um do share with i mean do share your questions uh, uh, with us happy to answer and if there is anything any questions any apprehension please do write in to marcom please.com and that i have shared the link with you of pmjay so you can directly go and you will find most necessary informations uh, in these two links we spend most of our time talking about these two yeah i think we can we can switch off the slide cool thank you so much so i didn't intend to take too much of your time at the end of the day but um, i'm i'm really concerned about what's going on in terms of um in terms of uh, the current situation india is a poor country and we have to remind ourselves so this is not the kind of it's not a country which can handle uh, the k the scale at which the pandemic is causing disruptions in our life whether it's in terms of our employment or our financial status and uh, a small initiative from our side to kind of remind you may not be a absolutely hopeless a situation there could be ways and means for you to kind of prepare and plan and protect yourself and i would urge all of you i know many of us believe that uh, covid is going to affect someone else but not me but i think covid has shown us that it has its own strange ways of affecting us so any questions please let me know i mean i'm waiting for your questions it's in the the quick q and a tab in my understanding how is the quality of esic hospital I, it's it's a uh, well i have not visited all of them but from uh, what i understand is that um yes there was a time when there were few uh extremely well maintained hospitals uh, that were available uh, under the sic umbrella and the others which were not but sic has made considerable investment over the years actually and uh, they have definitely improved you probably still cannot compare them with the private sector uh, hospitals but uh, they are not too bad either so and also depending upon severity depending upon the nature of uh, ailment esic also has a mechanism through which they can refer you to certain big private hospitals and better hospitals and which is extremely useful uh, in some situations so i think it's getting better it's probably not where it ought to be but then we just have to uh, make peace with the progress that they have been showing can you share names of insurance companies providing home care and uh, there are very few right now because after the last wave many of them actually withdrew they did out some of these policies at this point of time i i believe there are probably only a handful or maybe one or two which is currently doing it uh, essentially if your policy is still 
um, is still um, active, then you're safe. But if your policy has lapsed, then there may be a bit of a challenge in renewing the same policy. And that's our experience. I mean, I personally have experienced it. That's why I can share that with you. However, uh, it's possible for you in a couple of... Uh, Padma, do you have... Do you, would you know that which are those uh, ones which can, um, which can offer? I think United yeah. Insurance is one, yeah. right? United, National, and Go Digits are offering this. And uh, corporate policy also, they can add this home care treatment by paying a small additional premium. It ranges from uh, 100 rupees to 150 rupees uh, based on the size. They are adding this home care treatment also now. For the group so, size, if they pay per annum, they pay for 100 rupees and up to 50,000 home care treatment, they can take it. Perfect. So there you go. I think there are options available. It's very important for you to ask the right questions to your employers and make those individual choices at this point of time so that you, and again, our experience shows that you can get coverage under these individual Corona coverage or Corona Rakshak policies up to 5 lakh rupees. Um, again, it may not be enough if there is a serious hospitalization case, but it's still some coverage. Any other questions, any other queries that you might have? Um, I think the, the pretty much the rules of, are pretty universal when it comes to covering senior citizens. Um, however, um, I, I, I think uh, they are not discriminating between senior citizens and others when it comes to extent of this, but uh, corona coverage, if I'm not mistaken, is not uh, something that you can take for those uh, above a certain age criteria. I think 60 and above. Padma, can you correct me? Yes, uh, above 60, they will not cover. Up to 60, they cover. That is, that is. I'm talking about the corona coverage and the corona... Yeah, yeah. Corona, uh, corona coverage. And the corona rakshak policy. Yeah, yeah. But corona under coverage. the... Under the group MediClaim, I don't think that's ah, an issue. But, no. you know, I would actually recommend, I mean, India actually has a record in being least covered under health insurance coverage, by the way, if you look at insurance data. So it's not such a bad idea to even now cover yourself and your family and your parents uh, likes, uh, under a separate uh, MediClaim policy for yourself and your families. It's not such a bad idea. I would highly recommend that you do that. Any other questions that you might have? If someone is not hospitalized, then are they covered in ESIC? No, I think ESIC uh, does need, uh, for Corona specifically, need hospitalization. Uh, Maheshwaran? Maheshwaran, can you pitch in on this? Yeah, I mean, in uh, my, in, medical, in, benefits, in, medical benefits are offered, uh, that is, uh, medical treatment is offered to ESIC beneficiaries by the ESIC hospitals, that includes Corona as well. And when the employee is uh, uh, home quarantined or something like that, the leave is to be sang uh, sanctioned by the employer and the documents and after documents by the ESIC authorities, the dispensary and the branch office, the, uh, the, the insured person can avail sickness benefit. We have highlighted that, we have mentioned that in our presentation. Yeah, the sickness benefit is there, but yeah. what about the home care treatment expenses? Is ESIC covering that? No, home ESIC at present is not covering home, home care access. Sure, sure. Good. Thank you. That's good. So there is one more question which you guys have asked, which is very difficult. Did you answer that already? There's a seven, that seven lakh question. There is one question on the da, 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 da. Okay, it's yeah. How can, how can one claim the seven lakh after mishappening with poor employee? Uh, it's any, the, please do write to us. We will help you with the process, but this is under EDLI scheme provided the employee is covered. So there is a process. And if you, again, I think we shared the link just a while back. FQ section, I think it's already detailed. No, not done ESIC, sorry, for EPF. 
Uh, Maheshwaran, can we share a link on this with them? Where they can go and avail the EDLI benefit, the EDLI benefit. The EDLI benefit, uh, the, the family members have to approach the employer. The employer uh, will provide them the required documents. On the basis of the documents, the employer will process and get the benefit. There you go. So that's how the process will run. So you, you can just go and approach your employer to get that done. Can we get refund of vaccine if we paid for vaccine? Under the current insurance policies uh, that we are aware of, I don't think so. So that has been extended. Padma, Maishwaran, do you have any view on this? No. This vaccine yeah. cost will not be... Yeah, so um, yeah, I think vaccine cost is not going to be refunded at the moment. We don't know if there is a change in coming times. So this is the question, what are the benefits post-death due to COVID? It's an easy... reach out to the employer of the deceased employee and then the employer will uh, get certain forms to be filled in before it can get processed. Uh, what is the quality? We've answered this. Uh, da, da, da. Can you recommend health insurance? Someone hospitalized. Any other questions, guys? I think we've covered most of the um, please share a list of insurance. I think United is doing that and National Insurance is doing that, which are the ones who are issuing fresh Corona coverage policy. By the way, we do not get any commission for making these uh, recommendations. This is just in the in public interest that we are sharing this knowledge with. And if they withdraw, which they very well have the choice of, uh, I mean, bad luck. I have a question regarding the ASIC claim process. Can you please suggest? Uttam, why don't you detail your question and we'll, we'll respond. Or you can send in an email to us at marcom at teamlease.com and we'll try and respond to it. Is there any questions from Facebook which I can take up? I mean, I see a lot of you have sent messages in the chat box, but unfortunately it becomes very difficult for me to see those questions. So I urge all of you to move your question to the Q&A box. Uh, I have a question, madam, your session was informative. Can you please conduct the session again on weekends? Um, I, what we could do is that we will schedule a um, coverage of the same session again during the weekends, which means we will broadcast it again during the weekend. Hope that works for you, Rishal. We can do that, right, Macom team? Yes, we do. I mean, we can broadcast the recorded session again during weekends, right? Yes, we can do. Okay, let's do that then. Any other questions, guys? Anything else that you want us to address? I mean, it's a, it's a small attempt on our part. As and when we get more information, we will definitely reach out and organize uh, similar sessions. But uh, at this point of time, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to, um, you know, I'd like to tell you that do not despair, uh, do not lose hope, do not get worried. Uh, just plan and prepare in advance. Uh, know what your entitlements are, uh, make individual choices, you know, to protect yourself and your family. And I, that's why I heavily recommend taking separate, whether your company has covered you, whether you are covered under ESIC or not. So many of you may not be, maybe just out of the ESIC bracket. I would recommend heavily your taking uh, special medication. choices at all. 
uh, we are increasing Uh, no amount of such investments. I know that when things become better, we forget about it, but let us let us not forget the disaster caused by the pandemic on our lives. Um, I will definitely come back to you on what are your options in terms of building your financial stability and resilience through employment choices, but that would be another session in itself. So today's session, I wanted to just focus on benefits and entitlements uh, that are available to you. Does that sound okay? Does that sound good? Okay, I think uh, we are good. We are well within our time and thank you again for your participation. Do keep sending in your ideas. If you think that we need to hold sessions on anything, the area that is that needs to be addressed and uh, uh, we're happy to do that. If you're in a position, if you have the necessary expertise and know-how, we'll definitely do that. Meanwhile, please stay safe. Please stay at home. Please wear masks wherever uh, you're going. And uh, let's um, fight this together. Thank you so much. Take care.